watching the races regular, we've been waiting in vain. Well, that fastest lap of uh, Brady Arnoux's was in 1980, and Nelson Piquet's fastest lap in practice was 127.6, which is some 11 miles an hour faster than the lap record. So there you see in pole position Nelson Piquet just behind him, Ricardo Patrese. Then Prost and Tornberg, Torbe, and they're away. And coming through from the back is Kiki Rosberg, who has already passed and there. Straight in trouble, straight into the armco. Can't identify him for the moment. But as they surge away, let's have a close look. There's two cars identified there, and a third one going off on the side. A fourth joining from the pit road as he's gone out wide. And uh, we will identify as quickly as we possibly can. We're looking up the track while I talk to you, but can't see them properly. But it looks already as though four cars are out on lap one. Meantime, it's one of the Brabham's in the lead. It's PK, Nelson PK, the reigning world champion, followed by his teammate, Ricardo Patrese. And PK, as they're coming down towards the Bosch curve, with Prost in third position, then Tombe, then Arnoux, then De Angelis, then Rosberg, then Alvareto, and Derek Warwick is in about 10th position. And as they go round the Bosch curve, down towards the Texaco bends, Nelson Piquet and Patrese will, of course, as they have in the previous three races in the turbo cars, be trying to build up a substantial cushion to allow them to come in round about the 25th or 26th lap to do the pit stop that we have been expecting in the British and the French and the German Grand Prix. And we think, and I emphasize think, that one of the cars that has gone out is John Watson, the man who is in second position in the World Championship. Yes, it's very hard to see. I thought that both those two cars, that, uh, or two of the cars that got tangled there were red. Uh, that, uh, that looked like louder going through there. But it certainly Messi Rosberg made a terrific start from the third row of the grid, and he's uh, very keen to do well today. He's uh, determined to win a Grand Prix before the end of the season and uh, accumulate as many points as possible. But it's going to be a hard battle for him here against the power of the turbos, although he qualified fantastically well. Yeah, and Rosberg is just behind Elio De Angelis. Now, there are the two Brabhams in team formation. Number one, world champion, lap two, Nelson Piquet, leading his Italian teammate, Riccardo Patrese, winner of this year's Monaco Grand Prix, going up the ascent, the blind crest, which leads down to the Bosch curve. And here is a replay of the start. Now, let's try and identify the cards for you. All right, let's, now, they get away. And PK leads. Yes, Rosberg, you see on the top right-hand corner of the picture, made a terrific start. Rosberg going up against the pit wall. And then we'll, just as a tangle about now, we've got a couple of cars, here we are, a collision, maybe it's an Alpha. Two Alphas colliding, and there's a puncture on Tombe on the Ferrari. He's trying to get the car around to the pits, and at Alvareto has hit the barrier. He's parked against the thing, so it looks as if there's been some sort of action, but we've missed uh, the main excitement. Well, we can tell you, we think almost certainly that the two cars that went out on lap one were the two Alfa Romeos of Giacomelli and the Cesaris. And with Patrese now leading from Nelson Piquet, we can see that Patrick Torbay with a shredded tyre is out, that Michele Alvareto is out, the leaders go past, and in third position it is Cross behind, then Arnu in fourth position, the Angelis in the John Player Special is in fifth place, in sixth place is Nigel Mansell, seventh it is Rosberg, and in eighth position it is Derek Warwick in the Tolman. Derek, uh, very, very confident. Now look at this. You, you ought to see if the Brabhams have got it right. They're building up at least a second per lap increase in their lead. And it's Patrese leading now from PK and the Renault's holding on. Unfortunately, once again, we've uh, been witness to the world's best drivers not being able to get a clean start from the grid. And uh, unfortunately, this is becoming an ever-present uh, situation. Unfortunately, I think that this particular time, uh, De Cesaris and uh, Giacomelli have excelled themselves and done all of 50 yards. Uh, I think it is the two Alfa Romeos that have had each other off, but uh, we'll have to stand by to make sure of this. I return you back to Murray Walker and James Hunt at the Austrike Ring. Well, looking at the 
lap chart and we are now on lap three. It seems virtually certain that the two cars that we saw go out and there is Patrick Tornbay limping in. Watson and Lauder are both okay and in the race, that's for sure. So it was definitely Andrea De Cesaris and Bruno Giacomelli, the two Alfa Romeo drivers who were out on that lap. Now, there are the leaders, Patrese going up towards the Hellelique chicane, followed by Piquet. In third position, it is Alain Prost. There is Patrese, Monaco Grand Prix winner. Now, the Brabhams are actually starting this race with dry ice packed around the fuel tank, and that is Patrick Tolbe coming into the pits on lap three, obviously to have that offside tyre change. The man who won the German Grand Prix at Hockenheim, his first Grand Prix victory last week, and... Uh, a very welcome victory it was, too, after the dreadful crash that Pironi had in practice because Ferrari really needed something to get their tails up. And as usual, they're changing not only the tyre that has been damaged, but all the other three as well. And the Ferrari team were practicing this in the warm-up period this morning. Their fastest was 11 seconds. Torbe is talking to Forgeri in the blue shirt. That's the Ferrari team manager. And to... Frenzied applause from the crowd. Patrick Tombe in the V6 turbocharged Ferrari accelerates away a long way down. And I wonder if we are now going to see an epic drive by the Frenchman with Piquet in second place behind Patrese. So on lap four now, Patrese is leading, Piquet is second. Cross is in third position, Arnoux is in fourth place, in fifth position it is De Angelis, in sixth place it is Mansell, and in seventh place now it is Derek Warwick, and Theo Farby, his teammate, is in eighth position in the Tolman. Yes, poor Patrick Tombe, he must have uh, got that puncture quite early on in the lap, and he's had to limp all the way around, which is a very slow business with the tyre flapping, because you can't get too fast, otherwise you damage the suspension. And he certainly drove it very sensibly, but it's put him well out of the race. Well, now, where are Nicky Lauda and John Watson? And the answer is that Nicky Lauda is in 11th position, and John Watson is way down in 19th place, and this is lap five. I'm not particularly surprised. Now we are looking at the Glatz curve as they come up from the Heller Leaf curve and the two Marlboro McLaren cars as we look at one of the Tolmans, the two Marlboro McLaren cars have had trouble all through practice in getting the balance right. They've had a lot of tyre trouble wearing their tyres very, very quickly indeed. Indeed, in practice, they were only lasting one lap for the qualifiers. Now, there is Nigel Mansell, followed by Kiki Rosberg. Jack Lafitte seems to be coming up through the field a bit. And that's interesting, because Lafitte, like his teammate Cheever, had terrible problems in practice. And they worked very hard in the warm-up period in an effort to get the car set up properly. Lap five, coming towards the end of then. And I will give you the gap between race leader the Brabham BMW and the second one behind it, the, and it's Patrese leading. PK is 1.4 seconds behind him. Now there's quite a long gap before Cross goes through, and a long gap before Arnu is still in fourth position. And there is Nicky Lauda. Now it looks to me as though Lauda is starting to uh, make a charge and come up through the field. Lap six. Patrese leading from Piquet. Prost in the Renault third, Arnoux in the Renault fourth, De Angelis in the John Player special fifth, w uh, Warwick and uh, Farby are sixth and seventh, and in eighth place, in eighth place 